This video is going to teach you about Pythagoras' theorem. It's going to include finding the length of the hypotenuse as well as the shorter sides, the length of a diagonal in a 2D object, and also Pythagoras' theorem in 3D objects. So if you need to skip forward to parts 2, 3 or 4, then you can do that by clicking on the icons on the screen now. OK, so find the length of a hypotenuse then. Well, the first thing you need to know is that Pythagoras' theorem only ever applies to a right angled triangle and that the side opposite the right angle is always the hypotenuse. Okay. Also, the hypotenuse is always the longest length and that we use the, this formula to find the side, either the hypotenuse, the, the shorter side or the other sort of shorter side we use this formula. A squared is B squared equals C squared. Now A, B and C just represent the lengths on the triangle. So A, B and C. These two um, lengths, doesn't matter which one you call which, so this one could be B, this one could be A. But C is always the longest side, okay? So if you're ever trying to find the length of the hypotenuse, you're always going to add the two shorter sides after you've squared their length, okay? So let's do a question. Well, the reason I don't already have any um, lengths on here is because I want to show you that this Pythagoras theorem will work with absolutely um, any values that you want. So I'm going to use some decimal values. Um, to prove this to you. So let's say this one could be 2.1 meters long. This length here could be, um, let's say, 7. Point, uh, let's say 9 meters long. Now I don't know what this is yet, but I know it's going to be longer than 7.9 um, and 2.1 because I know the hypotenuse is always going to be the longest side. So the first thing I do when I know that I've got a, um, a Pythagoras question, and it won't always tell you it's a Pythagoras question in the exam, but if you ever see a question that's got a right angle triangle in it, and also they're asking you to find the length of one of the sides, it's always going to be that. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Okay, so a is 2.1, um, b is 7.9, and I don't know what C is, that's what I'm trying to find out. So I'm going to get my calculator. I mean, once you've learned the formula for Pythagoras' theorem, it becomes really simple to do these questions in the exam. 2.1 squared. Remember this button here will square any number you want it to. Plus 7.9 squared. And let's get the answer. So again, um, ever get a fraction? You should hear me say this in all of the videos. You press this SD button to get a decimal. So 66.82. Okay. 66.82. So really often in the exam, people will write down this answer and then they'll move on to the next question. That's a really classic mistake that you need to make sure you don't do because if you think about it, it's, it doesn't make sense that this length here is going to be 66.82 meters when this length here is 7.9. So let's think about what we've actually got here. So I'm just going to change the colour. So let's write down what we've got. We've got 66.82 metres is equal to the length C squared. Now, we should already know that multiply, multiplication and division are inverse operations, addition and subtraction are inverse operations. Well, at the moment, we've got a length squared. Now, you must note the inverse, or the opposite of squaring, is square rooting. So I'll get my calculator up. This is the square root button. And I'm just going to click that I want to square root the answer that I just got. So I'm, I press the square root button and then I pressed the answer button. And what does that equal? Okay, that equals 8.1743. Let's write that down. 1743. In an exam, they'll normally always ask you to round to well, normally two decimal places. So make sure you do it that accurately. So find your place, draw your door on, look next door. 
this isn't 5 or greater, so I don't need to add one more. So my answer would be 8.17 meters. And now if I look up here, well, that makes much more sense, doesn't it? 8.17 meters is the length of the hypotenuse. Okay, section two then, it's finding the length of a shorter side. So that could be this side or it could be this side. It doesn't matter which one it is. All you need to know is that it's not the hypotenuse. Okay, so not the hypotenuse. So you'll always be given this length here. So again, I'm just going to make up a length. Let's go for um, smaller numbers this time. So let's say that's 1.07 centimeters. Um, and let's say this is 0 0.3 uh, centimeters. We're trying to find out this length here. Okay, so again, we're always going to write down our formula. A squared is B squared is equal to C squared. And write in what we know. Well, we know that we've got A squared, so 0 0.3 squared. We don't know the other shorter side, but we know that the uh, hypotenuse is 1.07 squared. Okay, so a bit of a problem here because we don't, it's not as as clean, shall I say, as the last question. So in the last question, if we look back, we ended up with these two numbers. We added them together, we squared them, and that equals c squared. So we're going to have to do a bit of rearranging in this type of question, um, but it shouldn't be a problem. So I'm just going to write it out again. But this time, I'm going to take this part of the question over to the right-hand side. So I'm going to take it away from the left-hand side of the equation. So that just leaves me with b squared on the left, and it leaves me with 1.07 squared, take away 0 0.3 squared. So I've taken 0 0.3 squared away from the right-hand side because I took it away from the left-hand side. Remember with equations, you must always do the same thing to both sides. Again, I'm going to put that into my calculator. So clear that from last time. 1.07 squared, take away 0 0.3 squared, right, what does that leave me with, okay, 1.0549, again, that's equal to b squared, please write all these steps down in your exam, it's really important the examiner can see what you're doing, because if you make a silly mistake in your final answer, you'll still get all your method marks for these sections, so b squared is this, so again, we know the inverse of squaring is square rooting, So B is equal to this long number here. So I'm just going to write B down first. And then we've got 1.0270. Um, let's just finish with the 8. Uh, always write down the long number first and then round. Again, it's going to tell you to round to two decimal places normally. So I put my line in. Find your place. Look next door. This is 5 or greater, so I need to add one more. So that 2 becomes a 3. So B is equal to 1.03. So this value here is 1.03 centimetres. And again, we can sort of we know that we've got it right, or we know that we're close, because we've got this side is shorter than the hypotenuse, which is what we'd expect it to be. Okay, another classic kind of exam question is when you get given a rectangle or a square, and the exam will say, find the length of, di of the diagonal. Now, quite often people don't use Pythagoras with these questions because there's no right angle triangle and there's, there's no information that's been, in, you've not been told to use Pythagoras, so they'll either leave it or they'll just guess. Well, all you need to do is draw on your diagonal. So I'm just going to do that for you now. So this is the diagonal, isn't it? This is the diagonal that goes from one corner to the other, or it could be the diagonal from C to B. E either of these red lines are both diagonals of the rectangle. So I'm just going to use one for today. So let's work with this diagonal here. Well, hopefully you can now immediately see that, well, yeah, there is a right angle triangle and it's here. Okay. They will have probably given you two lengths. So let's say they give you this one to be um, two meters and they've given you this one to be 11 meters. So, okay, well, we've got this side here. Right, we don't know what this side here is. And they've asked us to find the hypotenuse. So this is the missing, or the diagonal, which is the hypotenuse. 
So, okay, you might be thinking, right, well, we haven't got enough information. Well, again, they expect you to know that, well, what are the properties of a rectangle? Well, if this is 11 metres long, then this down here has got to be 11 metres long as well. So now we've got the length of the two shorter sides. And we can use our classic normal formula to find the hypotenuse. So again, I'm just going to jot that down as always. A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. So that's 2 squared plus 11 squared is equal to C squared. Let's have a look on the calculator and just clear it from last time. Okay, so 2 squared plus 11 squared is equal to 125 square root the answer 5 root 5 again that's a form we don't want we don't like writing answers like that so we're going to write so click the SD button to get it as a decimal so that means that C is 11.18 you can see that the 0 isn't going to change the 8 so 11.18 and that's meters and again we can write it on here as well if you want so again, really, really simple, exactly the same as last time, except they're just putting it in a different format by saying the diagonal. So you must remember this exam question here, sorry, this exam word here, finding the diagonal, it's just using Pythagoras' theorem. Okay, so if you're going to be going on to the higher tier um, in your exam, then you should also know how to find Pythagoras in a 3D object. So as you can see, we've got a big cube here. And we've got three different lengths. We've been given 16 centimetres, 12 centimetres and 28 centimetres. And we need to find this length here, AG. So, OK, well, first of all, we need to start to visualise okay, what is that length AG and what on earth are we going to use to try and find that length? Well, we need to look for a right angle triangle. Hopefully you can see that this, these purple lines that I've drawn on create a right angle triangle. I can just put in the right angle there to help you visualize it so we've got one of the shorter sides we've got that, that one there is 16 centimeters we need to find this length here now again it's a, a bit of visualization that you need to use but hopefully you'll be able to see that this here is actually another right angle triangle so we're gonna have to use Pythagoras' theorem twice by finding well, what's the hypotenuse of this orange triangle laying on the base of the cuboid so, I'm just going to pull this out so we can see it a bit clearer. I'm just going to convert it into the right angle triangle that we know we're using. So, we know this is 12, we know this is 28, and we're trying to find the hypotenuse. Again, always write down your formula, and we just need to get our calculator up. Okay, so. To find the hypotenuse, 28 squared plus 12 squared gives us an answer. That's so n uh, 928 is what c squared is. I'm just going to square root that answer. Okay, 30.46. That's going to round to 30.5 centimeters. Okay, so we found this length here. Now, hopefully you can see, well, now we can find the length AG because we've got both the lengths of the two shorter sides. So let's look at our triangle again. We've got 30.5 written on here now. Hopefully, again, this will help you to visualise it. If I pull this purple triangle out and just show you exactly what it will look like if it was... You were looking, like, sort of from a straight on at it rather than it being at sort of an angle we'd have a right angle triangle that looks like this. So we know this is 30.5. We know this length here is 16. And again, we're trying to find the hypotenuse. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So, 30.5 squared plus 16 squared. Okay, well, there's my value for c squared 1186.25. I'm going to square root my answer. So 34.4. .4. 
And again, that makes sense because we know this long length here is 30.5 and we know that hypotenuse is always um, longer than that. So that's centimetres. And there's your question done.